Hello and welcome to today's sixth episode. Okay, uh, in the Eat Denver uh, edition. Okay, one second. We will be on this. Don't worry. So. Hello, guys. This is Lux here uh, from Recurum. We are here with the sixth episode for the Eat Denver version of Deeping Dive into Web3. Today, we have a community, a company which has tried doing some really you know like cool stuff in the metaverse okay um and it has fascinated me to know more about them in detail what what they do and what they're trying to actually build okay uh with that today we have the founder of that particular company i would not want to include the details so i would just invite them directly and that's kavya here okay hey hi kavya kavya is here from lumos labs and let's give her the stage to tell us about what does she do? Uh, how did she get into the space? And a brief, you know, uh, introduction about who is Kavya. So Kavya, you have to say now. Cool. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me uh, on this episode. So my name is Kavya. I have been in the blockchain space uh, before the word Web3 was coined back in 2017. And uh, okay. essentially, my reason to get into blockchain was very serendipitous. So got you know, got a freelance opportunity, got paid in Bitcoin. And then I'm like, oh, what is this new internet money? And then decided to kind of delve deeper. And, um, you know, the, the, the rest is history. It kind of like stuck me into this entire ecosystem. So okay. how I started was actually as a designer, right? Like I'm a non-tech person. I've done architecture uh, for my degree. I quit architecture after a year of practicing because it just wasn't my cup of tea and decided to pursue design as a career and um, got into graphic design, worked in a couple of startups, got into um, UI, UX and eventually products. So that was sort of my transition. And in this transition is when I uh, met or came across a couple of blockchain startups back in the day we paid me in Bitcoin and ended up, I ended up here, right? So in that, during that journey is when I kind of started delving deeper into the technology, understanding, you know, that um, over and above the, currency there's this whole technology layer below and this is such okay. a huge entity movement that's come into the uh, picture right and what kind of drives this movement is developers and um, i essentially wanted to kind of focus on that uh, part right how do we get more developers into that system how do we evangelize the technology how do we educate people about what this is all about right uh, beyond the retail side of things and uh, uh, that's been essentially my journey into that so, yeah, a little unorthodox, I would say, not the usual, you know, tech route, but yeah, this is uh, how it no, is. Now I've been on the tech as well, so yeah. Uh, no, this is actually like amazing. This, this is different, actually, you know. Usually, uh, most of the people what I, who I have spoken to, they're like this, they found something which fascinated them around the Bitcoin white paper. Okay. And that led them to, you know, basically enter the industry and work in the industry. But yeah, definitely, you know, your story is something which can be a learning curve for a lot of people where they would know how to actually enter the space as well. Right. Start working freelance jobs, take smaller projects, work with companies, and then basically start building things on your own or projects on your own. Right. So that is definitely, yeah. you know, something uh, like a takeaway for a lot of people. Okay. Uh, but with that, why don't you tell us uh, what made you start Lumos Labs? Okay. What is Lumos Labs? And um, what is the one reason that, you know, basically keeps you working on this particular project? Right. Um, starting with what's Lumos Labs. So while I was doing the whole, you know, freelancing thing, I, you know, kind of got around uh, to understanding what the technology was and what's lacking currently, right, as I mentioned earlier. So um, what me and my co-founder back then we wanted to do was essentially get more developers into the ecosystem. And both of us were non-tech. Right. So we decided that the best way that we can do this is organize more, um, you know, um, education drives and um, bring more opportunities because that's something that we could do without even knowing the technology. So essentially, uh, it started with uh, us, you know, uh, running education drives, doing like training developers in what blockchain is, learning it ourselves in the process and uh, organizing different innovation programs that would get developers to build on this technology uh, and earn money at the same time right so get okay. like practical as well as earn money. so this spanned across like different form factors of uh, programs right it could be a hackathon it could be an accelerator it 
starting up it could be a boot camp that we organize on a particular like you know just for the development and to end uh, that sort of stuff right so the compact always changed but over right. time we realized that hey companies are really looking forward to this sort of stuff right? like protocol companies are looking for engineers they want developer activity on their chain and they they are ready to organize programs like this with us so we essentially started as a services company that was uh, bringing web3 opportunities to developers on one end and helping uh, protocol companies build uh, developer communities for them so we sort right. of became that bridge between devs and opportunities and protocols and devs, right um as we progressed a couple of years down the line about 3 years into you know doing these as this as a service we realized that hey there are a lot of automation opportunities and bigger challenges that can be solved by using this tech and actually building a product around this right how do we automate developer relations how do we engage the developer through the entire journey everything from like learning for a you know web2 developer transition into web3 or a web3 developer how can he earn in different form factors or how um, he or she can uh, find a job in this ecosystem right so catering okay. to that entire journey so that's right. where the product i sort of came into the picture where uh, we are essentially building a metaverse where we are aggregating web3 opportunities across chains on one platform and building a shared community of developers on one end that essentially can do that entire journey on one platform why a metaverse is because you know we can have multi functional approaches so we can have learning earning and hiring on one platform as opposed to building suites of products you know for each of these use cases because if we were to do something in 2d we'd have that be like numerous products we'll have to roll out instead but if we build a platform that kind of build, brings all of these aspects together it it gets a lot more easier for devs to kind of transition and like go through different um, functions uh, in this ecosystem right so uh, that's a set what we're building a discovery platform for developers and a dev automation or a dev rel automation tool for uh, web3 organizations um, hmm. to put in the okay this is nice this is amazing okay um so with that you know why uh, like uh see usually most of the key companies who have like yeah, i am not sure if this is like a stereotypical thing but most of the companies who have labs in their name they usually build a various products together okay and then launch it as a wholesome structure correct so do you have that in mind is there like a projection about that yeah that's actually a very good question so essentially what we're looking at uh, the, uh, the metaverse is as that one enablement layer but beneath that layer think of every education portal out there that exists that can be integrated into this right so what we're trying to do in this journey that we are catering to the developers is also build their on chain identity so uh, think of them coming on to this metaverse uh, putting all their you know like um, career journey into this one on chain like resume that we uh provide to them on this platform and now every um you know education portal or a hackathon tool that integrates with this metaverse can essentially track the journey of this developer and then close the loop by adding that data back onto that on chain resume that we have so that way right. um help with credentialing in one way right so it gets Correct. easier to discover better developers and also we're trying to build that unified identity where um you know currently developers have like their persona kind of spread across several uh, websites or several tools there's github there's linkedin there's bitcoin there's their portal like keep going now imagine all of that data kind of coming together right so every grant that they've gotten every bounty that they've won every contest that they've uh, won hackathons um, job basically everything comes on the chain contest, with identity right? management yeah so that makes so imagine like that entire loop being closed with every um, you know dev engagement tool that exists right now everything from okay. you know um, an education platform to a hackathon tool to a grants dispersal platform can be integrated so we are looking Amazing. at building our own suite but we are also looking at partnering with existing companies because it just makes sense uh, right right so like okay Uh, why don't you like Kabir? Uh, if you have a demo, or you can show us this, show this on us, uh, like on your website or something like that. That would give the audience also an understanding of how things are, how they can basically um, become a part of the community as well. Okay, and how the product actually works. That would be really great. Hundred uh, percent. So I do. Uh, we are internally internally testing the product. So the product is very very close to launch. But okay. we aren't at a place where I can show that live demo. But okay. I do have a virtual tour that I can show to no, you guys. Definitely, why not? You can I'm like gonna... whenever you 
share your screen you can let us know yes i'm going to share my screen now okay so like while you're sharing your screen you know kavya you can actually tell us about you know what all things would you know the product cover what all features is uh, are there for you know basically the cost, uh, community out there or the candidates out there and as well as you know for the customers yeah so i'm actually i'll probably cover all of that in this virtual tour you can right uh, right look at both ends right the user end as well as the uh, client ends so users here are developers and the client here are web three companies and i can right. essentially walk you through like all of it right? so right. so can you see my screen yeah we can you can start awesome, awesome. so um essentially it makes sense to show a metaverse visually rather than you know explain it theoretically right the whole idea is to make this more visually appealing and give an experience to the developers so um, you know a, a demo is super important for a product like this so uh, to start with uh, the metaverse is uh, divided into multiple sections so we have a central hub which essentially uh, is a place where developers can gather together uh, we have buildings that have like nft showcases and uh, we have like a product showcase buildings within it and also thinker labs for developers right so this is a place where developers can network find each other collaborate find teammates etc and um, what you see on the uh, sides are buildings that we have for each company so with every company that comes on board onto the metaverse they essentially get a, la a land parcel and also one building to go with it now in this building companies get to uh, you know customize their branding and put you know the logo on the outside there are a lot of branding opportunities on the inside as well and also showcase all of their um, you know developer opportunities in one place and for devs it's it's a every building becomes basically one company's opportunities kind of block there and they also have an aggregated view uh, where which is sort of like a gui that they can play around with that uh, you know has um, opportunities across several um, different teams in one uh, view as well so this is a little bit about how the you know atrium or the first reception room of a building looks like where a company can put forth all the information that they have you know say for example we have utility polygon and eternity on board all the time and uh, now polygon if say this is the polygon building they can put up you know their video they can put up some information about what polygon is for new developers and um, also organize meetups workshops that for sort of stuff like this, right and uh, devs essentially get to do this so with each building there are there's one reception or an atrium is what we call it and three different rooms there's a learn room on room and a higher room and uh, we categorize the opportunities also in in that um, in these three categories right so uh, this is an example of what one of the rooms look like this screen is a place where you know they can showcase all the opportunities they have right on the side as well and developers that come in can essentially explore everything that they need and interact with these opportunities as well so if they say want to register for this particular hackathon that the company is running they can immediately do this there and uh, you know get started on working and also find teammates right uh, we can also uh, companies can also organize like different workshops and uh, tech events and gather developers in this place as well okay uh, so what does on do um so learning is any course um that exists out there right any learning course that uh, companies essentially have uh, earning is anything from hackathons grants bounties uh, any place that they can you know win something immediately and earn some money so contributions all of that comes into earn and hire is pretty straightforward it's any job opportunity that a company has right. so and each company has you know like all these three three things happening for them in tandem so what we are doing is making it easier for the developer to like find the right opportunity so if i'm a web2 dev i should ideally go to learn and start learning and then go to earn and hire if i'm a web3 dev then you know i decide where i want to do and what my objective is in the metaverse right um with this um for companies with all of this included they also get access to a dashboard that essentially gives them data of you know developers activities in their building right so what is the footfall like what sort of skill sets do they have um what is the most common skill set what's their location so there's a lot of data that we are providing uh, for the companies that essentially help the companies take more data driven and strategic decisions in terms of developer relations activities that they're going to do so their next hackathon could be you know uh, for example if there are too many people coming from say india 
the next hackathon could be focused on India to you know increase engagement in this particular location, right. right? So that's one example of an inference. So there are so many inferences that can be taken. Okay? And also, you know, the most active member in a building can be hired as an ambassador. That's sort of stuff. so. There's a lot of stuff that uh, they can do with this dashboard. And uh, developers' uh, identity can be supported. So uh, when every uh, com a company puts out like a recruitment opportunity or a hiring a job role out there, a developer can come in, apply for this job role, and they have, uh, the companies also have an ADS that they can track the entire um, you know application pipeline. And, yeah. and uh, also like hire the best, discover the best, right? With that, yeah. I also wanted to kind of show the. A collaboration layer of the developers as well. So the developers get to befriend other uh, developers or other uh, users in the metaverse. They can look at their uh, you know profiles and see if there's any match where they can collaborate together. So we built a collaboration layer as well where they can chat with each other. There's a feed where people can put out any tech queries and get get it answered by other developers in the ecosystem. There's also a layer where uh, devs can essentially build teams during hackathons because uh, team building has is one of the biggest problems during hackathons. So devs generally come, they'll apply for a hackathon and they may not have uh, you know teammates. So they're not able to complete the entire product. So that's usually a big blocker in getting more submissions in a hackathon. And we're also building a layer for them to essentially like find teammates. This is a little bit about what their profile would look like. So we have categorized it as personal info, which essentially has, you know, all of the personal details, languages that they know, social links, all of that. Skills is, um, sorry, I don't have this uh, tab open, but skills is essentially where, uh, you know, they put out all their um, um, coding languages that they know, skills that they have, uh, projects that they've worked on, anything that they want to showcase. Career uh, has um, all of the work that they've done, their education, et cetera. Achievements is what they would earn in the metaverse. So we're gamifying their entire journey in, in terms of you know their actions, right? So they enter a new building, they get points, they um, interact with an achieve, uh, with a with a opportunity, they get points for the same. So they keep uh, you know adding on to the points as they have more activities and do more activities in the metaverse. And NFTs is essentially where they can showcase any sort of NFTs that they've earned through say a learning portal uh, like you know Learn Web Three DAOs, Build Space, etc. All of them give out NFTs at the co uh, completion of a curriculum, and also um, the NFTs that we give out after every course is also something that they can showcase here. So this would show that if this person has this particular NFT, we can be sure of the fact that they know the subject matter that this NFT was got for. And uh, yeah, and they essentially can, um, you know, explore the world. We have mini games for them. So we're essentially trying to like gamify the entire experience for a developer to learn and make it more fun and, um, you know, friendly. So yeah, that's, that's a little bit about it. Okay, so, you know, like, and, uh, just ask me this, uh, Kavya, are you a Black Mirror fan? Uh, yes, I am. Why? Why is that? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you specifically why. Because there is one ep uh, episode which actually shows the exact same thing that you're building, and they, that's a talent show or something like that, where the person comes, sings, or you know, does something, and it's on the metaverse where everyone's virtual. Okay. I think I know which episode you're talking about. Right, right. <laughs> and and I'm like, okay, is Lumos trying to become black? <laughs> but yeah, okay, that's, that's really, you know, um, you know, out of the box thing. Okay. Uh, I really love the aesthetics around there, the, where you are, you know, the guys, where um, the imagination of, you know, doing this whole thing is something which requires a lot of, you know, uh, understanding in depth of the technology initially, the concept and structuring the whole thing into a, you know like basically a formulated manner which can actually give the actual results to both the parties then be the candidates or the clients as well right so you know kudos to you know uh, Lumo's team and you as well you know Kavya for bringing this whole thing down to one closure one website one product okay and with that you know like why don't you tell us uh, Kavya about uh, how do you feel about you know building this first and what do you think uh, is um, the future projection for you know Lumos? What do you guys think? Are you going to bring in the next few months, or what? Like basically, what is there for you in twenty twenty three and ahead? Yeah. Um, well, answering your first question, uh, how like how has it been? You know, building a product. The 
uh, bottom line is it's been really fun because at the end of the day as an architect i got to build something just you know virtually as opposed to like a real life building right but right. i built the whole world uh, virtually so it's completely down my alley so i really did thoroughly enjoy this entire process everything from like the ideation to what the world looks like in terms of aesthetics to every functionality that a developer needs right so um it's it's been very very challenging and i think it's a mammoth of a product because it has like four layers that we're working on there's like a interface for developers there's that metaverse the game engine itself and then there's a dashboard for clients and then there's a master dashboard for internal consumption so that's like a four layer product right so it's quite a bit to work on uh, but uh, you know it's all coming together well and we're almost at the end of you know like launching the product as well so in terms of timelines we're looking at uh, launching the beta of the product next month uh, we're doing internal testing currently so there's UAT ongoing at the moment as we speak and uh, soon we'd have like a, a quick uh, run through within the internal team to you know look at what breaks what doesn't you know push it as hard as possible and we've also rolled out a whitelist to our community of developers so we've gotten about 1500 developers that have uh, gone shortlisted that we've shortlisted through this whitelist to come on board and actually check out the beta of the product and give us more feedback to make it better and okay. in april we are looking at launching this publicly as well for everybody to use in terms of the future i i don't see this being a world for developers uh, for, forever right so in the next 2 to 3 years i look at this uh, this becoming like the linkedin on the metaverse right so a place where people come to find opportunities be it tech or non tech because um, i at the end of the day to build this you know a tech product you do need non tech roles as well right so you need a designer to build out this product you need product managers right so um, it it seems like the organic transition for a product like this to actually expand to non technical roles as well and that's what we're looking out to doing eventually so have a dev hub a marketing hub a community hub a product hub and so on and so forth going across with um, companies sort of showcasing their requirements that you know talent coming in so, so yeah that's a little bit about where we are okay. but that sounds pretty really amazing it sounds you know like energetic i feel the team is also running towards that and you know trying to get that all like, you know trying to clear all checkpoints to reach the final goal okay um with that you know kavya why don't you tell us like is there um, a learning that you have had um in the past years of you know building this and that has stayed along with you for you okay like not for basically with you until now something like that you would want to share uh, as a closing statement for people so they can remember anything like that um a learning that others can resonate with maybe is so um because we're building a product that that's quite different from everything else out there it's it's been very hard to actually get people to visualize what we're doing right like explaining this in words doesn't do justice and i've got this five month dark challenge and i'm kind of happy that we have something to show right now right and people can see what we're actually building um so i would say if you're building something new uh, before you go out to the market and you know like start talking about what you're building it's always great to have sort of like a poc in hand right that you can showcase because you're taken way more seriously when you have something in hand to show unless it's a product that's been built so you can say hey i am like angelus is one thing right then you can visualize something but here i'm not able to explain i'm like what earlier <laughs> so uh, that's been a challenge for me and i would say if you're ever looking at building something different from everything else that exists in the ecosystem always go with like a poc in hand um well like that apart you know there are a lot of technical challenges that we faced and i can keep going on forever about it but i'm not doing this so. <laughs> <laughs> no this was this was amazing you know um first of all you know uh, kagar thanks for coming on board okay this has really been a good conversation i've had in the last 20 minutes and we really see lomo <coughs> excuse me um lomo is trying to do really good in their space trying to build a good product um you know a good social impact for a lot of people over there as well right so for that you know um, we are very you know like um, glad to have you on board with us and definitely uh, we would love to see how more uh, you know and what more things we can do to basically uh, get more you know like how to say it, um impact driven um steps towards building the whole web ecosystem Yeah, thanks so much for having me, and I'm, uh, you know, like you guys are great partners to have as well, and 
really enjoy using your product as well. So yeah, look forward nice. to more collab. Definitely, no worries. Thank you, Kavya. We'll meet soon. Yeah, likewise. That's it. Bye bye. Bye bye.